Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel Wellington Bikes. My name is Paul Wellington and today I want to talk about my bike, the custom build that I've been working on for the past two years. Uh, so yeah, let's just uh, get right into it. So here we are. This is my current bike uh, that I've built over the last two seasons. Coronavirus has made it quite difficult to uh, obtain parts uh, locally in my area. Um, there are a number of bike shops, because uh, we do have tons of trails, there is a good riding presence around here. Uh, just getting parts has been a little up in the air, so I've had to outsource a lot of this uh, product from places like Alberta or British Columbia, where there's uh, a much bigger um, bike presence, I guess you could say. Um, so this is a 2019 Stump Jumper Carbon, that's what it started out as, um, Comp Series. Uh, and I've torn it apart and completely rebuilt it. So we're going to start with the back end. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken the original rims and hubs off. Uh, I believe the hubs are formula hubs uh, that are original. Uh, so right now we have a set of Industry 9 Hydra Classic, uh, six Paul hubs, um, about 790 bucks Canadian for the set of those. I also want to uh, try to explain why in some instances it's better to buy a, a more expensive bike um, that already has the higher end parts on it uh, as opposed to buying a bike, doing what I did essentially and buying a bike and then paying retail to upgrade each individual part. Um, so the bike itself is about 6000 Canadian new with the parts that it came with. Um, so we're already 6000 in. Uh, just off the hop there. Uh, so then uh, what we're looking at here is uh, again the Industry 9 Hydras. Um, they were about 790 bucks just for the front and rear hub. Uh, and then I picked up a set of Spank Fiber Core 350 rims. Uh, front and rear, these are 29 inch rims with 32 inch spoke or 32 spoke holes, uh, a little more rigidity. Um, these rims are supposed to be a radially compliant rim. They also have a foam core. Uh, in the rim, like in the actual rim, uh, to reduce vibrations and, and uh, aid in dampening. Uh, so we've got those on there now, uh, made it to the Industry 9 hubs. Um, the original drivetrain that came on this was the SRAM NX Eagle uh, 12 speed. Uh, we pulled that off uh, and replaced it with a 2022 SRAM GX Eagle uh, group set, entire group set. So cranks, uh, cassette, derailleur. Um, much better upgrade. Um, that group set was uh, $900 Canadian. And that's again, that's your whole group. Uh, we're running a Cascade Link. Uh, this part is about 400 and change Canadian uh, to buy. That uh, comes from the States, so there's duty involved. I believe I had to pay $60 in duty uh, to get that across the border. It came orange, anodized orange, uh, but it didn't match the rest of the bike, unfortunately. So I painted it. To match. I don't know if it's going to stay painted, but or hold up against riding in the elements, but we'll see. The dropper post and seat are still from the factory, but it's a Matic uh, Fusion X uh, 150 mil dropper. Um, I haven't had any issues with it um, at all. Uh, it's been very smooth, very good, uh, so I haven't worried too much about upgrading that just yet. If I do decide to upgrade, I'm probably going to go with a Fox Factory Transfer dropper. Uh, also in 150 mil because I find this is uh, sufficient for me. To do that upgrade, you're, you're probably looking at about $500 uh, Canadian after tax. Uh, but I haven't done that yet. It's the only thing on the bike that's still factory. And we've got the one-up uh, aluminum pedals, flat pedals. These things are phenomenal. Um, I've also got a composite set on the way um, just to see the difference. There's a little bit of a weight difference. Uh, I believe these ones are 360 grams for the set. Um, and the composite ones are about 310 in change uh, for uh, their weight. So you lose about an ounce if you go to the composites uh, versus the aluminum. But these have been fantastic. They've held up very well. Um, we get a lot of pedal strikes and things like that with this particular bike. It's a common issue. 
as the low bottom bracket height. I've also got this set into the slack position. Uh, there is a flip chip on this bike. So I am in the slacker uh, position, which lowers my bottom bracket, five millimeters, I should say. Uh, and then moving across to the rear suspension, uh, which originally came with a float DPX uh, shock. I've swapped that out for a Fox factory DHX2 coil shock. Uh, and that purchase was $1,000. Um, so there's another thousand dollars on the bike. Um, and then we took the original, um, Fox 34, um, fork, which was a, um, standard fork, I guess, in, in, or, or entry level 34 fork from Fox. Um, so I've taken that off and obviously swapped that out for a Fox 36, uh, factory. Um, this is a 160 mil, uh, travel. Uh, front fork. Specialized doesn't necessarily want you to put a 160 on the front unless you're running 27 and a half inch tires and I believe that has to do partially with geometry and partially with the fact that the tire might hit the frame. Uh, a lot of settings on the grip two damper on this fork. Uh, dialing it in is, is definitely a little more uh, finicky because there's so many options. Um, you've got low speed rebound, high speed rebound, low speed compression, high speed compression, um, all working in tandem on this this fork. Um, so if you're not into fiddling and adjusting things all the time, uh, you may want to go with the fit grip damper instead uh, on this particular fork if you're looking to upgrade to this level. Uh, this front fork was $1,750. It's a 2021 uh, model year. Um, so there's another $1,750. Um, the bar and stem is actually a one-up carbon uh, handlebar, really nice bar. And I also got the one-up stem, uh, that's an aluminum stem uh, for it. Uh, so moving forward, obviously, just some race face uh, grips. They're, they're pretty nice. I don't mind them. Uh, I don't pay too, too much attention to the grips unless they're hard. Uh, these ones are quite soft and grippy, so I like those. Um, and then we took the original SRAM uh, um, Guide R's. The SRAM Guide R was the original brake on this bike, front and rear. It was 200 mil in the front, 180 on the rear. And I've swapped them out for a front and rear set of Shimano Saint V2 brakes. Uh, we, we are running now uh, Ice Tech uh, rotors on the front and rear. So on the rear, we've still got 180 uh, millimeters. And then on the front, we've got 203. And in order to accommodate that, um, we purchased a uh, North Shore billet um, bracket to accommodate the 203 mil. Uh, these have exceptional stopping power. Um, the brakes themselves were 680 for the front and rear. Uh, and then the Ice Tech rotors were another 170 for the front and the rear, or 150, something like that. Uh, all these prices are obviously in Canadian. So if you do the math across the bike, um, I, I believe it's, I mean, I, I'm going to do the actual math and show it on the screen for you. Uh, but I believe it came out, oh, total out of pocket, somewhere around $12,000. Uh, and I'm fairly confident that if you were to buy a bike that was already built with all of these high level components, it may not cost that much. Uh, it might be a little less. I would, I would think that you could probably get a bike spec with this level of gear. For probably around you know nine thousand, ten thousand, something like that, Canadian. Um, so it definitely is more expensive to uh, upgrade your bike with components uh, after the fact than it is to buy a bike right off the hop. Uh, we've also got better bolts, titanium bolts on the rear shock. Uh, just reduces the weight, higher quality bolt. They were forty bucks for the set. Two two bolts for forty dollars Canadian. So yeah, it's um, it's been quite the uh, quite the uh, wallet buster. Uh, I've had people ask me, oh, why didn't you go with the you know the Axis? Um, if you bought a brand new group set, why didn't you go with the Axis kit, wireless? Uh, and the, re this, the reason for that is very simple. Uh, one, they're very hard to find right now. Uh, but more importantly, I've actually got a, a whole lot of friends that actually ride as well, and I've got a few of them that have the Axis. And there's been quite a lot of issues um, with the Axis uh, uh, derailleur um, not shifting properly or, or just having little quirks and issues that have made me sort of take a step back and refrain from, from 
committing to that level because it is a very expensive uh, upgrade. Uh, so right now I'm going to stay with the mechanical uh, drivetrain. It is trustworthy. I don't have to worry about batteries. I don't have to worry about it. You know, uh, you know, if it doesn't shift properly, I can adjust it on the fly on the trail. Super easy. Um, I've also got a SRAM XX1 chain on here uh, in black. Um, I don't know if it makes a huge difference. Uh, not, I mean, if you're talking weight, it might be a little lighter, but I don't see any significant or major difference uh, impacting my ride between the GX chain and the NX chain and the XX1 chain. Uh, I'm sure if you stuck it on a, on a scale, you might find that this is a little bit lighter, but um, right now, the bike currently as it sits weighs just over 33 pounds. Um, you got to consider this is a 1700 gram fork and a 1.6 pound rear shock. So, I mean, there are things that I could do to reduce the weight slightly, um, but I don't want to get it too light anyway because I, I like doing a lot of downhill stuff and I don't want to, um, or flowy stuff, and I want to feel like the bike's planted. Uh, having a bike that's too light might feel floaty if that makes any sense so yeah so this is uh this is the bike so that's my uh i guess once over and cost analysis and verbal review of my 2019 stump jumper carbon custom that's fully upgraded so now let's break down the cost and how much i spent out of pocket to make this build happen All right, my name is Paul Wellington. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Wellington Bikes. Have a good one. We'll see you on the trails. Cheers.